of that last, the last part of that song that they just sang said, it'll be wor worth whatever the cost. You believe that this morning? I do. I do. I've been thinking about a song all week um, that uh, they uh, used to sing a long time ago. And, um, and it, it's, it's really just spoke to my heart this week. Um, and it just, it just reminds me uh, that whatever the cost that I'm paying here, uh, Paul told us that, uh, the, that the, the sufferings of this present time, that they're not even worthy to be compared to the glory that's going to be revealed. In other words, what Paul was saying was, you can look at these sufferings, and then you can look at what he's doing. He said, those things aren't even worthy to be lined up against each other. Those things aren't even comparable. And I believe that today. Whatever that we have to do here, it's going to be worth it all when we get there today. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Second Chronicles chapter number 34 in the Old Testament is where I want to be this morning. Um, I've got just a uh, couple verses that I want to read this morning, but I want to look at uh, a few things that God has laid on my heart. Uh, in Second Chronicles chapter 34, uh, you'll, you'll want to keep your Bible open. I'm going to just read two verses. Um, I would love to read this whole chapter to you. Um, but you would not appreciate that because it's 33 verses long. And so I will, I will go through and just uh, highlight some things that I feel like God has uh, dealt with me on this week. Um, I'm preaching this morning on this thought that it only takes one. Just one. It only takes one. And before I read these first two verses in 2 Chronicles 34, let me set the stage for you. Uh, for the last 57 years in the nation of Judah, uh, they had experienced a lot of apostasy. Uh, Hezekiah had died and his son Manasseh had become king. And the Bible said that he reigned in Judah for 55 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. We see a pattern in the Old Testament, especially in Kings and Chronicles. Uh, we see this pattern of the nation of Israel. They just kind of did this. They were up and down all of the time. Uh, it was all based on leadership. If they had a king that would seek after God, they were doing good. If they had a king that just followed their own ways, uh, they found themselves uh, in, in, in the judgment of God. Amen. I, I think that's still true today. It all, uh, it all hangs in, uh, on leadership and uh, what we do in the house of God. I believe today that we make a decision whether we're going to seek God uh, or whether we're going to follow after our own devices today. Uh, Manasseh had chose the latter. He was going to uh, do his own thing. He was going to go his own way. So uh, the Bible teaches us that uh, because of that, the children of Israel suffered a great deal uh, because of his decisions. And then his son Amon, uh, he comes on the scene. And for only two years he reigns. Uh, but he followed in the ways of Manasseh, his father. And he did evil in all of the land. Uh, he set up groves and he brought in idols into the temple and they worshiped false gods and uh, they set up uh, Asheroth poles and uh, for many years, uh, 57 years, these two men uh, had led the nation in a spiritual apostasy uh, to the point where the decline of their spiritual health had become uh, uh, so, so severe that uh, it seemed probably to the people that they would never be able to get back to the place that they once were. Amen. But then we find a young man by the name of Josiah uh, who comes on the scene. Josiah, the Bible says in verse number 1, was 8 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned in Jerusalem 1 and 30 years. And he did that, watch this, that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And he walked in the ways of David his father. And he declined neither to the right hand nor to the left. I want to stop right there just for a moment uh, and, and draw our attention to this for a second because uh, I'm preaching again on it only takes one today. Uh, and when we look at this story today, we realize that uh, by the time that Josiah had become king at a very young age, 
uh, that the nation of Israel had went through 57 years uh, of spiritual decline and apostasy uh, throughout the land. And the Bible said that when Josiah took over, I uh, would imagine there wasn't very much hope for the nation. Uh, there was folks that looked around and said, uh, we are probably in a place that we'll never get back to a, a relationship that we would like to have with God. Uh, now, I don't know about you this morning, but uh, in, the, in the nation that we live in and even in the churches that we worship in today, uh, I hear that so much and I, 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 I feel like so many times that uh, there's a lot of people that they have, uh, uh, they have come to that conclusion Conclusion that uh, we are in a place that maybe we will never get back to the place that uh, we'd like to be with God. But I want to remind you today that, uh, that there is still hope this morning and uh, we find that hope in the story of Josiah. And I uh, want to say to you this morning that uh, every person that sits under the sound of my voice today, uh, you have an opportunity uh, to rise up this morning and say, uh, it only takes one and I'm willing to be that one today. I'm willing to be uh, the Josiah in the midst of all the Manassas and uh, all of the Ammons that uh, have come before me today. And you notice today that uh, the Bible said in verse number two that uh, Josiah did that which was right uh, in the sight of God today. And uh, brother, I want to tell you this morning that uh, he did not do that which was right in his own eyes, but uh, he did that which was right uh, in the eyes of God. God today and uh, I want to say this morning that uh, if we ever want to be that one and uh, realize that it only takes one then uh, we've got to realize that uh, we want to do right not in the eyes of man but uh, in the eyes of God today. You realize that uh, everything that they were doing when uh, Josiah walked onto the stage that uh, brother whatever he did that was right in the sight of God uh, was something that nobody else was doing uh, for 57 years years in, uh, in his nation uh, his father and his grandfather had uh, walked in their own cunning devices and uh, done what pleased them so uh, when Josiah showed up and uh, began to do what was right in the sight of God then uh, he re quickly realized that uh, what he was doing was not uh, like Ammon and Manasseh had done and uh, brother I want to tell you this morning that uh, if we want to do right in the sight of God uh, we'll have to do things that uh, brother doesn't look like what everybody else is doing today. And uh, brother, I want to say this morning that, uh, brother, it doesn't matter to me what the whole world does today. And it doesn't matter to me what the Tennessee Baptist Convention decides and uh, what the Southern Baptists say about it. And uh, uh, brother, I want to do right in the sight of God today. And uh, uh, brother, I want to be right in his eyes. And uh, even though everybody else looks at me and uh, brother turns their back on me and uh, says they don't agree with me. And uh, uh, brother, I'd like to be right in the sight of God today. And, and brother, he said, the Bible said that he did that which was right in the eyes of God. And notice this, that he followed after the ways of David, his father. Now, I've said to you this morning that his natural father was Ammon and his natural grandfather was Manasseh. But the Bible described David as his father. And you know why? Because he realized that, brother, it was a godly heritage that uh, he needed to seek after today. And, uh, brother, I would tell you this morning that, uh, brother, I'm glad this morning for the godly heritage of, of people in my life that uh, I look back over the years and, uh, brother, they set a standard of truth in my life today. And, uh, brother, I know some of you here that uh, you can see people in your life. Uh, uh, brother, it might have been your father or grandfather. Uh, it might have been somebody outside of your natural family. Uh, uh, but ain't you glad uh, uh, brother of a spiritual heritage uh, uh, brother that you found in your life down through the years uh, uh, brother of people that did right in the sight of God uh, uh, you see when uh, Josiah looked around him and uh, he wanted to please God uh, uh, brother he needed to have some examples in his life uh, uh, you know what the Bible calls them uh, it calls them way markers today uh, it calls them people that they look back in their life and uh, they say those are the ones that uh, help me get myself lined up with God. And brother, are you glad this morning that you've had some of them way markers in your life? Amen. People that may be dead and gone now, brother, but you can still hear the sound of their voice ringing in your ear. And brother, it sounds out, brother, in your heart today. And brother, 
I can remember back, amen, to some of the preachers that's dead and gone. When I was just a little boy, a brother that stood firm, a brother with their heels planted in the gospel, amen, and they took hold of that gospel plow, amen, and they moved forward with it, amen. They shined that King James Bible, a brother, upon my life today, a brother, and taught me the way and the ways of God, amen. I can still remember, a brother, some of them good old saints of God, some of them little gray-haired grannies, amen, that sit in the back of the church, and you might not have known they were there, brother, till the Spirit came through, and boy, when it came through, they got a hold of something, amen, and it raised them up, and they'd begin to shout to God, you know what that was? That was a spiritual heritage today, you know what we need to do? We need to quit looking at things around us, and brother, they don't have any spiritual significance to it today, and we need to realize, brother, as Josiah did, that David, his father, was a man after God's own heart, and we need to find those people in our lives today, and we need to say that's what we're following after, because it only takes one. I want to be that one, but if I'm going to be that one, I need to learn what that one looks like in the eyes of God this morning. Amen. Uh, boy, listen, uh, he looked at David uh, and he realized that uh, David was a man that uh, could help him get close to God today. Uh, amen. I want to say to you this morning, uh, you need to look around you today and realize that uh, there's some folks that will keep you away from God uh, and there are some people that will draw you into God. Uh, amen. Listen, you need to follow after them today. Uh, and the Bible said that uh, when he began to walk in the ways of David his father, you'll notice it, uh, brother in the third and fourth verse the Bible said in the eighth year of his reign he began to seek God in the twelfth year of his reign he begins to purge all of the land and in the eighteenth year of his reign if you look down at verse number eight he begins to repair the house of the Lord now let me tell you something this morning what that's telling us was that was a lot of years over ten years that he went through this process of doing things to bring the nation back to God amen if we're going to be that one amen we need to realize that it will not happen overnight today amen this is not something that we're going to be able to wake up in the morning amen and be where we want to be you know what happens in the church far too many times we decide this is what we want and this is right in the eyes of God but the problem is we want it just like we have things in our natural life we live in such a convenient filled world that amen, when we snap our fingers we want it to be done we want to pop a TV dinner in the microwave push three minutes and we're ready to eat amen but I'm going to tell you this morning that it doesn't work that way amen in the things of God amen 57 years of apostasy we're not going to die easily amen Josiah realized that if I want to be where God wants me to be uh, then I'm going to have to commit myself uh, uh, to a process of doing right uh, and it does not matter what I encounter along the way it does not matter how long it takes me uh, I'm going to do what God has called me to do uh, uh, Josiah no doubt got down to Jerusalem uh, amen and all these other places that he had to travel to uh, amen when he began to try to reinstitute uh, uh, brother the house of God uh, he went down down to different places amen and he probably saw some things that it discouraged him and there was probably a few times that he said I'll just quit right here there's no need to continue I've been doing this for eight years or six years for ten years hey I'll just quit now but he what he didn't do that he committed himself to doing what God wanted him to do and to follow him what God wanted him to follow he found out that it was a process that would not happen overnight but he committed himself to the ways of God and said it doesn't matter how long it takes I'm going to make it to where God has called me to be today 
Amen. And you need to realize that this morning. Amen. If we want to be that one, we have to understand that this will not happen overnight. That it's a process and we will be committed to the process. Amen. But you know what he found? Amen. When he did what God asked him to do and he committed himself to it and he didn't turn to the left hand or to the right, but he stayed on track. The Bible says in verse number 14 that there came a day when they walked out of the house of God and Hilkiah came to Shaphan and he said, I found something down here in the house of God. You know what he found? He found the book of the law. Amen. You know what that was? It was the word of God. Amen. It had been lost for 57 years. Can you imagine being in the house of God and the word of God being lost for 57 years. I mean, think about that for a minute. I look around this room this morning and I see there's a lot of folks here today that's not even 57 years old. Hey man, can you imagine going your whole lifetime, you've come to the house of God, you've participated in the things of the, of the house of God, but there's one thing that's been missing all of this time and it's the word of God. Let me say to you this morning, that is an as far-fetched as we might think it is today because we have a copy of the Word of God, but that does not mean we really have the truth of God's Word in the house this morning. Is that getting amen? Amen. 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 Listen, you know what we have a lot of today? We have a lot of tradition. We have a lot of people that have fallen after what they were told to do. They're going this way and they're going that way. But the question is, is that God's way today? Amen. Listen, we can do a few things in the house of God. We can do God's work our way. We can do our work God's way. And neither one of those will really work today. But the only thing that will work is if we do his work his way today. Hey Amen. They brought out the book. And Hilkiah comes out to Shaphan. And he said, I have found the book of the law. Hey Amen. He brought it to the king. And the king said, read me the book. And you know what he was saying? We want the truth. Hey Amen. I want to tell you, if we ever get to a place where we realize that it only takes one and we want to be that one, you know, we'll have to desire. We'll have to want the truth above everything else today. Uh, we'll have to come to a place where we say uh, I enjoy this uh, I enjoy some things but uh, if I hold them up against the truth and the truth says it's not right uh, I'm willing to stop uh, and follow the truth uh, of the word of God today hey, I'm going to tell you something you might think this morning preacher that's awful elementary but I'm going to tell you hey man I preach in churches all across this state and I'm going to promise you today that you don't have to go very far to find people that say doesn't matter this is how I like it yeah I mean real worship and God fearing men and women of God it's a thing of the past and hey man listen I, I, I remember some of them good saints of God boy I'd like to have them back in this generation we could use a few of them hey man but they're not here you know what that what that means that means it's up to me and you to look back as Josiah did at David his father and say I'm following after that I'm going to go the right way some can say go this way and some can say go that way Hey, amen but I've got God that tells me exactly the way to go hey, amen and his promises are yea and amen hey, amen and his word don't return void hey, amen but it accomplishes that which is set forth to accomplish today and I have been assured hey, amen because of what I've read in his word I have been assured that if I go his way that that is the best way today because I realize in Hebrews 11 that was men and women that sought after him that they never found him they died not having received the promise but they seen it afar off they were persuaded of it they embraced it and God ultimately brought them to what he showed them today boy and I'm glad he'll do that for me and you this morning 
Hey man, Josiah said, read me the book. Shaphan was the scribe. He was the one that would pin it down. He was like, he, he was like the record keeper. That's what the scribes were. They were record keepers. And he said, I want you to read me the record of what Moses said and what God said to Moses. And hey man, he sat down with Josiah and he opened up the books. I believe he started with Genesis. Hey man, I believe he began to read to him about what God done in the early creation. You say, preach you think they knew about that? Sure they did. God took Moses up on a mountain one day and he said, Moses, he said, I'm going to put you in the cleft of this rock. He said, I'm going to show you my hinder parts. People think that means a lot of things, but it's what I believe. I believe God said, I need you to write to the people and tell them everything that happened in the beginning and the only way I can show you is you see what happened back there. Hey Amen. God began to show him. Hey Amen. Give him a detailed record. And now here's Shaphan all these years later standing before the king uh, with a book that's been found. Uh, uh, boy, it's amazing what will happen uh, uh, when we rediscover truth uh, in the house of God today. Hey man, he starts in Genesis. <laughs> Hey man, I, I really didn't know I was going this way, but I'm having a good time this morning. Hey man, listen. He starts in Genesis and he begins to read the book of the law. Hey man, he read him to him what Genesis said about the early account. He read to him about, about how that Noah and his family was spared. He talked to him about Joshua. Then he gets into the Exodus and begins to realize the promises that had been kept to Abraham. Hey man, then he begins to read about the pattern. Uh, uh, things that were going to come uh, uh, with the temple that was going to be built uh, and then he begins to see the blood sacrifice uh, uh, that was going to be mentioned way out there in Isaiah uh, uh, that he hadn't even experienced yet uh, and then he begins to see that picture uh, of how there was going to have to be a lamb uh, uh, that was slain at Calvary uh, uh, because of the bulls and the goats uh, uh, that were brought into the temple uh, it was going to take a blood sacrifice uh, uh, to atone for sin uh, and boy I believe Josiah just got happy down there. I believe he got convicted in his heart and he said gather all the people up here. They need to hear the truth of the word today. Now listen to me. Follow this for a minute. Uh, Josiah, he was trying to do right. Uh, he finally discovers truth uh, that had been buried for over 57 years. Uh, he has them to bring the truth back up there. Uh, amen. This is where I love this story. Uh, amen. Because as Shaphan begins to read to Josiah uh, the book of the law, uh, the Bible said that Josiah, uh, that he began uh, to be convicted in his heart. Uh, and the Bible said that he rent his clothes. Uh, in other words, he tore his clothes off uh, that was an outward expression uh, of an inward conviction uh, amen that's what the spirit does to us if you don't know uh, amen listen you say preacher we know that some churches don't uh, amen but I'm telling you I'm talking about real old fashioned God sent Holy Spirit uh, uh, initiated uh, conviction Fiction down in his soul began to take place and he rent his clothes off he tore his clothes amen he knew there was something that wasn't right amen and he turns to all the men that were there and he said I want you to go down he said I want you to get everybody you can find from the least to the greatest he said I want you to get the common man he said I want you to get all the scribes and all the priests get all the governors he said you bring them back up here he said you assemble them. He said, Shaphan, go drink you some water and get your voice ready. We're getting ready to do some preaching up here. Hey Amen. I'm telling you that when the people got there and they gathered them together, you know what happened? They began to read the word unto them. Hey Amen. Josiah, his heart was bubbling up within him. Hey Amen. He realized that if this nation's going to be turned around, it's only going to take one and I'm going to be the one today. And he said, gather all the people read them the word of God and I'm getting ready to show them a, a godly example today amen the word of God began to be preached amen and as they begin to preach the word of God notice that uh, the Bible said that uh, in verse number 31 that and the king stood in the place and he made a covenant before the Lord now let me just simply uh, tell you what that really means today that means that Josiah said hey man if repentance is going to come to this place it's going to start right here today you hear me 
If it's going to come, it's going to start with me. It's not going to start with my neighbor across the aisle from me. It's not going to start with my Sunday school teacher. It's not going to start with the deacons. It's not going to start with this person on this side or that person, it's going to start with me, Josiah, uh, when he gathered all the people up there. And you know what I find interesting? He could have repented before the people ever got there. I believe he was convicted. But he said, I want you to get all the people up here. And as they got the people and they gathered them in, the Bible said that uh, they began to read this book of the law. And the Bible said that Josiah was the first one that stood in verse number 31 uh, in his place. You notice that, that he had a place you realize you have a place today. He stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk, uh, to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments. He said, uh, this day I'm making a decision for myself that uh, I'm going uh, to uh, uh, repent and uh, I am going to renew my covenant, my, uh, my commitment to God. I'll be the first one to step out, uh, to take a stand and uh, say that uh, we know that we uh, have some work to do. We know there's some things to be accomplished and I'm the first one that's willing to step out and to repent, to renew, and to draw closer to God, to the ways of God, to the things of God, and to the work of God. And watch what happens. The Bible said in verse number 32, I love this verse. Look at this verse with me. The Bible said, and he caused, who's he? Josiah. He caused all that were present. How many? All. That means every person that was there. You know what happened? I believe this. I believe repentance is contagious today. Hey Amen, I'm telling you, I believe that, I, I, I mean, I've been in places that uh, one person will come and the next thing you know, you got an altar full of people. And that's what happened here. Uh, the Bible said Josiah, uh, he heard the word, he gathered the people, he stepped out, he took his stand, he said, I'm the first one to say this morning uh, that I am going to repent and renew. I'm going to draw closer to God. I'm going to do the things of God. In verse number 32, and he caused all that were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand you know what happened just one chapter ago we read in chapter number 33 and chapter number 32 we read of a nation that for 57 years has went through the, uh, the biggest spiritual decline that they had ever seen and uh, they were at rock bottom. They had been judged. They had turned on their own king. I mean, they were so far outside of the will of God that you would think by the time you get to end of chapter number 33, this story is about to wrap up. But then one man steps out and said, I'm willing to be that one. Oh, not only am I willing, I want to be that one. And he said... We're going to do some things that are right. We're going to follow after some things that are holy. We're going to institute some things that are godly. We're going to follow after some things that are righteous. And we're going to move forward for God. Amen. And he gathered all of the people just like we have here this morning. Amen. And he steps out on the stage. And he said, folks, let me be the first one to say that I'm taking a stand for God today. I'm sick and tired of what's been going on in this place. I'm sick and tired of what the devil has worked to destroy. And I'm going to be the one to step out and renew my covenant with God. Amen. And follow after the ways of God and do what pleases God. And the Bible said that all of the people stood and they said, we're going to follow you, Josiah. Amen. Can you imagine what happened here? That when Josiah vowed himself to God, that every person there that day said, we're going to make the same commitment. And just a chapter ago, you had a nation that we may have never heard from again because of so much unrighteousness and apostasy that had taken place in that land. And it took one man, Josiah, to say, I'm willing to be the one that makes a difference today. And by the time you get to, end, to the end of chapter number 34, you not only have Josiah and Shaphan and Hilkiah 
and all the priests and the scribes coming together, amen, and gathering themselves in the temple and saying, let's read this word that's been lost. Let's rediscover the truth that has been forsaken. And Josiah stepping out and saying, I'm willing to be the one. I'm going to be the one. I'm going to take my stand. I'm going to recommit myself. I'm going to follow after the ways of God. Not only did Josiah do it, but the Bible said that all the people stood. Amen. I believe that just as we're here this morning that they stood and they began to come down. Amen. They began to take their place before God. They got down on their knees and they began to look towards the heavens and say in the, within their heart, if it's possible for Josiah uh, who came out of nothing from a place that uh, his father and his grandfather taught him nothing but unrighteousness and uh, taught him nothing but idolatry if it's possible that he could take a stand uh, because that uh, he looked back at some godly leadership in his life by the name of David that uh, was a man that walked after God's own heart that uh, a man that walked down to the valley of Elah hey amen and destroyed the giant with one fling of a rock uh, if he could follow after that then surely surely I've got a man a woman in my life that I can look back at and find righteousness in and that I can set them as a way marker in my life and that I can follow after their direction. Amen. They all came and they took their place before God. They renewed their covenant with God. They made their stance before God and they said we're going to follow after the ways of God. Amen. I'm going to tell you what happened was a nation. Brother, their hearts were turned back to God not because there was amen, a great revival that swept through but because one man took a stand and said I'm willing to do and be what God wants me to be today come get a song this morning as we stand to our feet